Tank corner of the map in this best of seven game. Number six, he is acing for his team right now. He did lose tomorrow initially, but then came back after his revive and beat him in game two. And now we enter his next game, which is against a Protoss. So we'll see how his ZVP is holding up lately. In the upper left hand corner from my insanity, ladies and gentlemen, in the yellow, Petraeus. And down to the bottom right hand corner of the map, we have our purple Protoss player from Team Property, ladies and gentlemen. It's Starna. Alright, so. The gateway comes down in the base of Starnad to start us off here. No real surprises. Petraeus going to be taking a hatchery first over towards his third base, it would seem. He's going to be popping that down right now. And again, I mean, is there really a reason for that? I guess he gets the creep out over there a little bit sooner. Um, on this map, though, it doesn't really help him push it across the map any faster, I don't feel. So I wouldn't say there's any real advantage to that. Just puts it over there and... We'll see what his probe does when it comes in. Um, we'll see, I guess he's probably wanting to put down a third hatchery now. Uh, but there is a probe here, and oh, this drone. Ah, the probe's made a mistake. He should have really tried to block this, especially with the fact that he's scouted. Um, he should have really tried to block that and force a pool before the third hatch, but he doesn't really realize it. And now he should know, because he should know that this being a hatch first and no pool, he should know that over hatchery is up. So he's just going to move over there, double check his timing. Um, again, at this point, he should already know this, but um, just wants to double check, and there it is. He's out of a hatchery. Up and running. And, um, yeah, walks by a drone there as well. <coughs> as he passes on by. Probably just checking around, continuing to stick on this side of the map, and why not? There's no Zerglings out just yet to really turn him away, so he's allowed to kind of stay over here. He pops his Nexus down nice and quick behind all of this, and Cybercore just now on the way up. Probe's being incredibly boosted out, double gas mining. Petraeus is going to come in to confirm all of this, and again, we're in a situation where the early stages of this game is going to be a little bit slow. We're going to be waiting to see what the first real moves are going to be out of Starnan. How's he going to approach this game? Is he going to go aggressive? Is he going to add on some gateways and put on a little bit of pressure? Or is he just going to go straight into that forge, straight into those upgrades, and uh, you know play for a little bit later in the game, at least kind of a later two base all in, or just straight in towards that fairly early 8-9 to nine minute third base? Again, a lot of different uh, possibilities here for Starnan. <laughs> Probably do lead this time more three games 2-2. Two, two. Thanks to Moro, who took three games in a row before Petraeus took him down on his second attempt. And, um, yeah, Mothership Call pops out. We see a Stalker moving across the map, and just, oh, sorry, is that moving across the map? And a Stalker on the way. So, just some very life pressure here initially, and in fact, that Mothership Call will run over these uh, Zerglings. Um, yeah, okay. The sweet little Zerglings just run by. Not going to really be stopped here or anything, but uh, sees the Mothership Call at least, so he knows that it's coming across the map, and has a little bit of a warning to get a couple of Zerglings out to help him defend against this. And um, again, just a little bit of light pressure here. I lost track of that cell. It's very hard to see on the minimap when it's purple, especially once it's made it onto the creep. Um, the Stalker is uh, on the way across the map as well. It has been chasing away the Zerglings up until now, but again, they'll come across here and just look to get a little bit of free damage done. Mother Paul can't really fight in this scenario. Doesn't really have enough on it. And Ah, these Zerglings. Ah, ah. Okay, we're gonna move back. So Zerglings okay for now, and still all three units here are alive, and with the numbers now rising for Sarnan, he's gonna start getting a little something done. A couple of extra gates added on back at home. Um, and there's the forge as well. Okay, so that's the real thing we're looking for here, the forge to um, tell us that he is gonna be going into this um, <coughs> later kind of you know, he's going to be focusing on what's going on later on in this game, not looking to just win straight up super early. Um, and, I mean, he can still two base all in, but we actually see the Fed Nexus being dropped, so Fed Nexus on the way down, and um, again, them upgrades are going to be used to just put him into a nice position as the game continues. Speed has kicked in here, 
And this one stalker just about gets into a nice position in that little corner there. Trying to keep itself alive for as long as possible. Force field comes down. I don't think the Zerglings actually saw that stalker, otherwise they'd be there right now. But now he's actually force fielded out of his third base and Lynx will start working down on this. Freeze out to get walked in, but these Lynx should be able to play ring around the Rosie and take this down. Betrays isn't going to try it though. Okay, now he does. Okay, now he's actually just going to go for the probe. Hmm, I really feel as though he probably could have got that there. Uh, it's very close, I guess. It takes a lot of control to actually be able to get it. And I guess if the sentries and the leadership core both came over, he probably would, wouldn't get it. In which case, it was bad to just go for that one single probe there in the end. So, Petraeus just um, nice and standard. I mean, tries to cancel the third base, doesn't commit too many things to it. Goes into Burrow as his kind of tech choice right now. Which is quite intriguing, so we'll see how he wants to use that throughout the game. Does he even have a Rotor on up? No, so just going to be Burrow and Zerglings here initially. He'll get a Rotor on soon, it seems. Unless, I guess, he goes Hydra Ling. But then the Burrow's... Mm, I guess Burrow can still work out. Let's see. He just have a Rotor on. Oh, <laughs> it's all the way over there. Wow. Okay, guys, just, you know, if whatever I say, just take it with a, you know, a pinch of salt today, because apparently I'm really not in form. Um, I really need to... It's, it's, a, it's a good thing I'm not going out drinking anymore in the near future because I, it really seems to have uh, killed my brain in the last few days. So uh, that's probably a good uh, good thing I've uh, stopped now for a while. Anyways, um, <laughs> Blink's on the way. We've got plus one on, uh, about to finish up for our Bros players and a few more gates coming in. Will he move? I mean, he's going to move across some pressure here again with the recall. It's very safe. It's a very safe move altogether, in fact. And with so many force fields, he should be able to pick off this fourth base. So... It's kind of just a standard trade, and I mean, obviously Petraeus will try and stop him if he's in position, but he's not going to see this until way too late, so I think this fourth base is already pretty much dead at this point. And, uh, yeah, this is going to go down. It's going to start to move over, but there's just, again, more than enough force fields available to just block off whichever direction he needs to block off. There's that fourth base cancelled. And, uh, ooh, that's actually really nice. Just adding on a queen to the death tally right now. A couple of links as well. And start out making the most of this little push out across the map. Really nice little moves there. Um, fourth base cancelled, kills a queen, handful of Zergmans too. Really nice, doesn't even need to, um, in the end here, use his uh, recall. He can just walk back home. So, Trace wasn't quite in position in time for that. He's going into an infestation pit right now. Pathogen glands on the way for him, and first two infestors on the way up. So, Gonna be looking to kind of play Roachling and Fester. We do see a hive on the way, so I wonder if we see some kind of combination of Blinding Cloud and Fungal, which is definitely a very strong combination if you can make it work. It's very micro intensive, it really requires kind of top notch army control. But I wonder if we might see that. It'd be very cool to see if we do. Right now, we just see a lot of Sorgas being added on here by Starnam. Plus two on the way. Robo Silly about to finish. Temple Alkai's been added as well, and it is kind of the perfect comp. You know, it's the, it's the right decision, right? I mean, with Temple Alkai's, you can get them Temple out. You can feed back all of the, um, you, not only the infestors, but the potential uh, vipers as well. He saw the infestation pit, so and you saw the hive morphing as well. So again, Temple Alkai's is something which is very, very much so just a natural reaction at this sort of point in the game. And it's gonna be an ultra cavern then from Petraeus, so. You know, that makes sense to me. I would have maybe realized a little bit sooner if he'd focused on his upgrades a lot more earlier on. But I guess it wasn't really kind of based on a melee build. Again, he's got these infestors out, and it'd be interesting to see if he can really use them. Can he defend this fourth base again? It's under fire. There is a base down to the bottom left as well. We do have a big counter attack. A big row of Zerglings. Starman not really responding to this just yet. He's really not paying attention to it. Okay, just warps in there. Some Zerglings starting to squeeze through though. But I don't think enough of them will squeeze through in time. Force field now available as well. As that fourth base over here does get cancelled. So, Zerglings do find a pylon to kill. But again, not making it in towards the uh, uh, natural is really nice in terms of for Starman. As he starts up a war prism, and again, if you knew about this base to the left hand side, I mean, maybe he has a slight inkling about it. In fact, he has already seen it, so he's actually going to start heading over there now with the army. Um, so, again, just clean out a little bit, creep in the middle of the map again, just keeping his opponent, trying to keep his opponent low on bases as best he can. And there's um, a couple of zealots actually going to start moving forwards here, but no observer to help him with creep. First few ultras started to be added on. I mean, we did see a robo facility added, but I don't think Starlands had a. Has he had a. Okay, he's seen the little cavern, so I mean, he should really start adding on those um, immortals. I mean, okay, there they are in production now. Archons are going to be very good as well. He's got that storm too. Mm, I don't know if he's really going to need storm, but the um, <coughs> immortals and archons are 
definitely going to be great. Right now, though, it's still not, they're still not out on the map. And just a couple of zealots in the middle are going to get cleaned up here. Warp prism heading towards the natural and then warp in to the north side as well. Just continue to clean creep to the right hand side of the map. And uh, into the natural we go. These zealots are going to drop off. And I mean, Petraeus start, has to start kind of responding everywhere right now. So much damage going to be done by this if he doesn't. And already five, six workers killed in the last few moments. And a big warping in towards the main base. A lot of Zelda's coming in here. He's actually going to try and go for this Ultra's Cavern. Is he going to stop kiting his plane? That's a huge upgrade to the nine. and he's going to get it. So these Ultras have two less armor than they should do at this point. I mean, the Zerglings, they clean up those Zelda's very effectively. The Zelda's only have plus two attack, no armor upgrades. So plus, two, uh, plus one Zerglings, even just plus one Zerglings, do rip through them. Ultra Cavern being rebuilt again. Cancel that kiting his plate in that back sort of time. Really, really nice move. There's a few roads just going to move towards this uh, potential fourth base of Starn. I'm trying to st establish this right now. And uh, he's going to have to commit a little bit more over here to defend against these few roaches. He cancels his cannons. And um, he's actually just going to give up on the idea. For now, he's moving to the right hand side, though, with the rest of his army. So, just going to clean these up, make sure he kills them off. Sure, it's not really doing much with them. He could try and borrow them. I mean, it may just be worth trying it just in case there isn't detection over here. And I mean, of course, there is an observer, so I guess it doesn't really matter. And uh, Sprinkle Grove is finally going to catch this warp prism and help to take it down. So, really, not too much um, going the way of uh, Starlin in the last couple of moments. Uh, in fact, Patrice has been making some nice moves, cancelling this fourth base or slowing it down and forcing to cancel the cannons. Um, and yeah, cleaned up that wall prism as well. Starnan's lost a little bit of his momentum here. Uh, things initially looked great for him. He kept cancelling the bases. He had, uh, you know, worker damage being done left, right, and centre by zealots. Starnan's still looking kind of okay. I mean, moving through to the middle of the map now, he's got these immortals out, and that's a big, big difference. Um, you know, when it comes to going off these um, ultralisks, a few zealots want to try and make their way to the left hand side, but they're getting intercepted quite quickly here by the zerglings. These queens need to be so careful because they're a big part of this composition where, you know, the, the queens are there to kind of transfuse these ultras time after time after time. But if they get killed off before the rest of the army's around, it's less than ideal. Now, again, there's a lot of storms available, a lot of feedbacks, but a lot of units to feedback, a lot of queens. A lot of investors. Look at that. There's even there's like over there's 20 units here, which can be feedbacked, and the feedbacks do begin to land, and we see storms coming down as well. Oh, the fungals and blinding clouds are huge. Petraeus is going to crush this. Oh my God, the one single viper, the two vipers coming in and just oh wow, absolutely destroyed. Well, that was just completely anticlimactic because I thought Starland was going to put up a hell of a fight, but. Petraeus just gets an incredible engagement. Two fungal groves, blinding clouds. All of a sudden, the entire Protoss army can't really fire. Even a neural parasite and one of the immortals. Man, and then, you know, suddenly Stan has pushed all the way back. He had a great composition, and now he, he's kind of lost everything. He lost all of his Templar. He only has three immortals now. Wow. Petraeus, what a fight. What an incredible fight. Just, just com completely... You know, he, he's he's all of a sudden in just a commanding position in this game. It was so close before. Both players had such similar banks. Um, you know, they were both pretty much even on supply and so on. But look at that now. Resources lost heavily in favor of the Zerg. Not every day you see that one. And um, the Pros. There's an expensive army to lose. Can he really recover from this? I'm not too sure. I mean, his fourth base was delayed in going up here. So his economy hasn't been brilliant. Trace isn't rushing into anything right now, though. He's getting his Grey Spire up, he's continuing with upgrades, and these are the right decisions to be making right now, it seems. I mean, if you think about it, what's the, you know, why, why rush this? You know, you know, you, if you just wait it out a little bit, you know, make sure you stay safe. Yeah, okay, you give him time to rebuild, but all this time you're improving your own army. You're getting into a better shape, you're getting into more upgrades, and you're getting into new tech choices with the Broodlords. So there's a lot of different possibilities here. Uh, these two ultras are going to cleave down this pylon. And these uh, two ultras to the top right just uh, clean up a couple of zards there. A little great army though right now from Petraeus. I mean, I, is this even like... I don't think... Uh, there's a lot of immortals, but... Um, yeah, I, I really don't know. I really don't think there's going to be enough. I mean, they're both going to be maxed out again, but... Upgrades are going to be slightly better this time around for Petraeus as well. 
But the DTs get warped in down to the bottom left. We do see a base being cancelled by these Dark Templars. So DT is trying to be as annoying as possible. Just again, just trying to harass. We have DTs all over the place right now. Smokewell in the natural gets taken down by the Zelots and the Dark Templar. And this hatchery might go down before the uh, Overseer comes in here. The DTs are killed off. Transfusers coming in. DTs and Zelots into the main base as well. It's going to be so close, but he doesn't quite get it in time. And um, because of that, the DT is able to pick off the uh, natural hatchery here. So actually, really nice moves once again by Starna. Trying to keep himself in this game. Again, he has been able to max out. So if it's him that takes the convincing fight this time around, he can kill off a lot of that bank which Petraeus has stored up right now. And if he can deplete that bank, it's very much so can become a very even game here once again. Stalker, bit of a weird introduction of Stalker, but um, it is a Stalker down to the bottom left here. I guess it's pushing these overlords away and stopping them from creeping up, so I guess it kind of does make some sense. Um, Petraeus going to start attacking though, he's going to move over to the right side, he said he has had enough. <coughs> Transfusers coming down and Infested Towns being dropped as these ultras go up against these uh, Pokemon Cannons. Moving into position here, but Starnan going to try and react to this. Is he going to be able to save this fourth base? It looks as though Petraeus isn't actually interested in attacking up here. Um, more than happy to just clean out the cannons which were in position up until now. Single pile being taken down here, Petraeus. Controlling the map at this point, fifth base established, or sixth base established, up to the far right, up, uh, far upper right corner. A lot of mortals out here, and just a couple of zards trying to clean up a little bit of creep here and there. A couple of burglings around the map as well to give that a little bit of extra vision. Templar leading the charge, a couple of feedbacks land. Ultras still have so many queens to transfuse them though. Petraeus is going to change direction with this army and again head towards this fourth base. This fourth base which doesn't have cannons to buy time this time around. So that's just going to be an infested two ultras and a handful of lings heading up towards the upper right corner uh, to try and take us down. GT is going to slip by though, and the GTs will be able to move forwards and take down this base. Oh, he probably could have got the score call if he wanted to. Down to this side again, just cleaning up. And well, I mean, actually, right now, Starland's not really responding. I guess. I mean, the GTs turn around. I guess they're going to clean this out quite easily. So. I guess he is responding, but he's not doing anything with his main army. He's consistently being pulled left and right, left and right. He doesn't want to fight. He's actually going to start building up his Tempest count here. And uh, I guess we wait and see if he can get enough Tempest out and if they're going to be able to make enough of a difference. This entire uh, fourth base mineral line completely ransacked, though. 18 workers killed. Maybe not the worst of things because, I mean, he's going to start mining out his other bases soon. Um, I mean, natural already gone, main pretty much gone. So he's actually over Sadger on the third base. I mean, he could do with actually just transferring some workers over here, anyways. GT is again being kind of the best unit over here defending. These GTs have been going huge. Eight kills, eight kills, and nine kills. <coughs> As we see, these ultras and queens getting into a position to move forwards and look to see what they might be able to do. A lot of high energy Templar here. First Tempest starting to hit the field. Another attempt at do some damage on this fourth base is for now unsuccessful. The overseer's being brought in to help out this time around, but one of them goes down, the other one very close to going down. As <laughs> again a single stalker to this bottom left hand corner. Last time we came over here, there's a single stalker as well. As immortals on their own are gonna chew through these uh, spine cores, and they're gonna eat their way through this hatchery as well. So top right base denied, but an expensive denial. Um I guess Starnan might try and come in and do something about this. Blind Cloud's coming down to try and protect these others. These others are taking a lot of damage, though, of course. As here comes the rest of the army. It's essentially kind of a two die, a multi pronged attack here from Starnan. As we approach the half hour mark of this game, things are closer than they've ever been, apart from the banks. <laughs> Petraeus, who haven't been on 81 drones for so long, is on an 8k, 8k bank right now. So he has a lot of room, a lot of potential to trade. Um, you know, denying these extra bases is all well and good, but this fifth base is still mining from Petraeus. He still has that income available, even if the other base is denied. So, uh, this is a little bit interesting. This situation we're in right now. Hatchery going to come up to the upper right corner <laughs> once more, just trying to re-establish his bases time and time again. Put more infestors added on. A couple more upgrades, plus three upgrades being added in. And 
I mean, there are all these tempers consistently being added as well, so has to be a little bit careful. Flint doesn't want to get them abducted, and that might be what Petraeus is good for right now, and there isn't a big abduct. Queens will take a little while to kill them, but they will eventually kill them. And still no commitment here by Starman. Not really committing to a fight, just continuing to be happy, harassing around. Single, <laughs> single new list to deal with this uh, war prism. And uh, Sauron needs to kind of bring in a couple of uh, stalkers over here. Lingus once again trying to run by into the natural expansion. Starnan is supply block though, so he can't actually warp in. He just warps in that one DT, but it's not quite enough, and the uh, pound goes down, so it's actually going to be a little bit troublesome for right now. You're going to see a few more workers going down here. So again, Starnan's economy being denied. He can't get off of these four, ba four bases either. Crew spread all over the map. Petraeus is just really. In control, I mean, the group spread all over the map, he's got the army positioning, he's got decent composition as well, I mean, he's got the bank to replace it if he needs to. So this is, like, he got everything right now going for his way. This army just moving up towards left or right, and uh, are we going to see a commitment to a fight? No? Uh, Single feedback goes off, not really achieving too much. A single Zal to the bottom left is going to be surrounded by drones. And these drones, one of them today becomes a hero. Let's not bother wasting our time finding out which one it'll be. I mean, it's not super important right now. And there's a lot more going on around the map. I mean, this upper right base has finally been established by Petraeus. What's the resources loss looking like? 13k lost to 25k. And if Petraeus haven't mined so much more throughout the game, you've really got to be a little bit worried for him here, uh, for Starman here, who. I mean, <clears throat> he's got a lot of Corruptors that isn't the best anti air out right now from Petraeus, but Petraeus can just remax some Corruptors if that's all he has to uh, finish off killing, and then they can be made into Broodlords, and, you know, he has an answer. He's been very conservative for a long time here. He's only lost two Ultralists. He's only lost seven Investors. He's actually been very careful with his units throughout the entire game. A few changes getting cleaned out, and Queens just continue to push this spread forward a little bit more at a time. Just a little by little. Ooh, lots of feedbacks going down there actually. And these uh, Templar are hitting a lot of feedbacks on these Queens and a lot of them are uh, going to have to start retreating now. None of them really dying though. But it does give Stormland a chance to push back a little bit. The Creepy really needs to focus on Creep over here. I mean, he really, if anything, needs to think about taking another base at some point. Because um, otherwise he's just going to lose because Petraeus has way more than him. Way more money. I mean, in fact, I mean, it looks like that scenario right now. Uh, as these ultras think about engaging, but they don't. And Petraeus just waits and waits and waits. Why rush into it? No need to potentially throw here. He's just playing the patient game. Ultras moving around the map. Not really much to say. I mean, these guys, they've been kind of sitting around in very similar positions for quite some time now. Neither one really wants to commit. It's Petraeus who's able to build up more of a bank. He's got more money. He's got more workers. He does have a smaller army though, so he's going to need that bigger bank to remax him. He will need to fight this in two stages. DT couple of Zarks getting picked off here pretty swiftly. <laughs> well, just killed off to the right hand side. The investor not doing much good either. As 12 crooks get added on. Nice fungal growth and finally something which both players seem to want to commit into, but the blinding clouds are going to make it so that Starland can't. He wanted to, he was going for it, but the blinding clouds just zone him away and suddenly it just becomes a couple of free units on the map for Petraeus. Petraeus with these 12 corruptors really looking to start getting into a position where he can fight against these Tempests, abduct them into the army, kill them off nice and quick. Just start working his way against them. Because there's something he doesn't have a, the best answer for right now. Queen's getting one shot. Thirty-five minutes in game. Two more mortals on the way up, plus two air weapons on the way for Stone and continue to commit in towards this uh, Tempest play. And Fester is just gonna make it out of range of the detection here. Tempest have to be so careful, remember, I mean, if they get abducted into this army, they, whatever Tempest gets abducted into this is going to die almost immediately, so you really just have to be very careful. There's a few lings burrowed around down here. As you can see, a Robo be added on, so potentially a Colossus switch coming in. 
I'm not sure how well that would do. I'd like to actually really just see an Oracle added on so you can get some uh, vision on this army a little bit uh, more often. So that's a work their way through all of these spine calls to the top right and finally the drones are going to be under fire but again Petraeus has been mining there for quite some time and we're still looking at a situation where Starnan has not got any further bases past this fourth one which is now his only mining base. Third base is gone, it's mined out, main gone, mined out. I mean not just in minerals but more or less in gas as well. 500 gas remains on the third and that's it for the first three bases. Starnan really isn't mining much at all right now. His bank continues to fall, his supply actually dropping as well, not going up and Petraeus is again just continuing to rise. His supply is still constant at 200. And um, he's, he's back 17k, 18k. Minerals. Finally, we see a duck be fairly successful here. As a lot of feedback's coming in, and we're actually getting some commitment forward to by Sarn. He's really pushing this now. But do you just need to kind of push, push this a long, long time ago? I think he might have. I mean, the reinforcements like coming from Petraeus, the reproduction is just going to be so huge. I mean, he's still afraid to really commit forwards into these, these uh, tempers though, being left behind. Could Neural Parasite, I guess, if you wanted to. Uh, a lot of being lost here by Betrayers, but again, he can just rebuild it all so quickly that it really doesn't matter. And Starnan, he gets close to max now, but he's used pretty much all of his bank. He's still only on four bases. He has to make something happen in the very near future. He has to find a way to make something happen. He has to make some moves. and. For the past 20 or so minutes, he hasn't found any of those moves, so he really has to dig deep here. He has to find a way to break through Petraeus to take a fight, which is super, super, super favorable for him to bring him back into this a little bit. And uh, I mean, Petraeus just moves around the map because he knows as long as he just sits around and doesn't let a fifth base go up, that he's going to be completely fine. I mean, yeah, okay, he keeps losing bases here and there, but it doesn't really matter, no. He puts them up, he mines a bit from them, they go down. As long as he mines out the map, it's just minerals roll, it's just money, resources, which Sarnan's never going to be able to establish. Sarnan might now finally be able to mine from this fifth base, but Petraeus is again just trading off units and replacing them with corruptors, getting ready to deal with his big air army of Sarnan. He's happy to trade, he's got the bank. This is, um, <clears throat> again, like, we finally see the fifth base coming down here. From Storm, the first attempt at this base for him, and well, I mean, again, he's, he's taking these fights well. I just think he needs to commit forwards because as time goes by, nothing's getting better for him. Really nice feedback coming down, and again, Fungal Grove Blinding Cloud being absolutely huge here in this fight. And I mean, overall, it looks as though it's going to be a fairly even fight. There's not much left on the ground, honestly, for Petraeus, and he is pushed back. Ah, Starland needs to push his advantage, he can't really wait around at all. He has to go, he has to start doing something, you know, this is his one chance, he doesn't have money. I mean, if he took a fight like this 10 minutes ago, I mean, he's had these 10 minutes after long, if he took a fight like this 10 minutes ago, at least he might have had some sort of chance, but he's just going to betray us so long to build that bank, but I mean, taking out the bases now is almost pointless. 10 Broodlords on the way, 8 Corruptors as well, and he doesn't even kill off the base in the end, he just kind of scares the drones away from the gas mining. Kind of a frustrating game to watch, I guess, because, like, from our point of view, we can see how far Hypatreus is, and yet he won't commit. And, you know, obviously, we know Stan and probably should fight because he's got no chance otherwise. But these guys, you know, obviously, neither of them know exactly their. You know, I guess they have pretty good ideas about how good a by the position their opponent is in, but, again, yeah, kind of frustrating to watch. As if you're as uh, well, this is game and then fungals and blinding clouds. The combinations are huge, huge storms on top of these corruptors, though, forcing them away from the tempest. And is it going to be enough? I'm not too sure. As another blinding cloud comes down, with the brood lords in the sky to back it up, that will be game. And Petraeus is finally able to edge out ahead and take us to an ace match. Game number seven.